Susan. I'll be with you in a moment. Welcome aboard. Welcome aboard. Good afternoon. Oh, here they come. President of the line and Mrs. President. He still hasn't learned how to smile. Ah, uh, Mrs. Reardon and Mr. Reardon. Well, what a treat. I can't remember the last time you were on a ship of mine, sir. I can. We foundered off Sandy Hook for three days. I'll never forget that, Pop. Yeah, it was unfortunate. Uh, officer, will you escort and Mrs. Reardon to their suite, please? Yes, sir. This way, please. I uh, trust nothing will go wrong on this trip. Oh, not a chance, sir. No, sir, I've assembled a top flight crew. Each man only interested in one thing, doing a good job. I'm glad to hear that. Oh, Captain Huxley, am I glad to see you. While I was ashore, I got word on those missing men from the engine room. Yeah, I know, I know. I heard about that. Oh, not the two who jumped ship. I mean the two who fouled up the pistons. You remember the day after they played poker, forgot to oil the crankshaft. Yeah, well, Miss Pomeroy, we'll discuss this some other time. Well, anyway, I followed this hot tip. And where do you think I found them? Miss Pomeroy. Where, my dear? Jail. But don't worry, Captain. The judge promised me... Miss Pomeroy, left. you know how you've wanted to meet Mr. and Mrs. Reardon? Oh. Now, how do you do, Mr. and Mrs. Reardon? Reardon. Why, of course, Mr. Reardon. I didn't recognize you without a bottle in your hand. I beg your pardon. I, I, I mean, the last time I saw you, you, you were christening this ship. Oh. Well, uh, perhaps we'd better go to our quarters, dear. All right, my dear. On second thoughts, you go ahead. I think I'll have a look at the lifeboats. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry if I've embarrassed you in front of... Sorry? Why should you be sorry? You can do me one favor, though. Jump overboard? Well, that hadn't occurred to me. However, that's a thought. No. See that everything goes smoothly. Particularly now that the Reardons are on board. Yes, sir. Well, did you have enough nightlife, Luigi? I've never been so exhausted. That Maurice doesn't know when to stop. You mean the wine baron you met yesterday? Oh, we were out till 3 o'clock this morning. My feet are killing me. Oh, he took you dancing. Oh, no, he had me crushing grapes. <laughs> he kept looking down, and I didn't know. I thought he was bashful. How was I to know he was measuring my feet? <laughs> well, better luck next time. Hey, Nuji, how about a nice professional type manicure? Now, I can hardly keep my eyes open. But I have such a busy day tomorrow, and I know you won't have time for me in the beauty salon. Oh, all right. But you'll have to wait till I put my hair up. <laughs> Thanks, Nuji. I'll get you all set up. Anybody home? Everybody. Oh, hi, Cedric. Hi, Susanna. Here's that perfume you wanted me to pick up. Ooh, my one extravagance. Once a year, I treat myself to a bottle of this. At $50 an ounce, how can you afford that even once a year? Well, I get two cents back on the bottle. <laughs> Would you like to see what I bought for my nephew? Mm-hmm. What is it? Oh, it's something I picked up from a bloke on the dock. Turn around and count to ten. All right. <laughs> Ten. Isn't that clever? It's so big and it looks so real. Where do you wind him up? <laughs> it is real. It's a real monkey. Chimpanzee. I named him Bimbo. Isn't he cute? Adorable. Smart as a whip. He only cost me ten dollars. And probably your job. You know the rules for bid animals aboard ship. You just better find a good place to hide him. You're right. I can't take him down to the crew quarters with me. I wonder where, uh, 
Oh, no, you don't. He's not staying here. That's out. O-U-T, out. But you've got the perfect setup here. You've got privacy. There's just you and Newt. And that's the way it's going to stay. <laughs> now, now, you let go of me. He's just being friendly. He likes you already. <laughs> Here's his breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I'm sorry, Cedric, it's out of the question. Just keep it for tonight. I'll find another place for him by morning. Be good, Bimbo. Thanks a lot. I'll pick him up first thing in the morning. Hey! Hey, wait a minute. How do you like that? Now, what am I going to do with you? <laughs> all right, all right, calm down. I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. <laughs> I hate to admit it, but you are kind of cute. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know any tricks? Oh, <laughs> oh you look so pretty that way. <laughs> Put them back. Now, you just keep practicing while I get ready for my manicure. <laughs> Who told you you could get on Nuji's bed? <whistles> hey, you've been out in the trees longer than I thought. <laughs> and stay off this bed. It belongs to my roommate. Come on. And you've got to behave yourself if you want to get along with her. See? This is Nuji. <laughs> well, you're no Rock Hudson yourself. <laughs> Hello, Miss Pomroy speaking. This is Captain Huxley. I just want to reiterate. The Reardon's on board. I don't want any monkey shines. I understand, sir. <laughs> I didn't quite catch that last part. I was, uh, I, I was just clearing my throat, sir. Just clearing my thro throat. Oh. Well, now, while I have you on the phone, when can I get your schedule of activities for this trip? Tomorrow morning. All right, I have a few things here you can incorporate. Have you got a pencil? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Oh. All set? Uh-huh. Oh, I'm so sleepy, I can't keep my eyes open. Oh, just a second while I get a fresh pencil. Now you can go ahead. Okay. Now soak your other hand. Neglect your nails like this. Yes, sir. Sir. Now hold still. You know you ought to take up the piano. With these long tapered fingers, you could be another Paderewski. Nuji, you are sleepy. Oh, not too sleepy to know that you've neglected your hands. Just look at that thumb there. Nuji. And no polish. Really, Susanna. How can a thing like this happen on my ship? Well, it can't, but it did, sir. And not just once, but twice. Captain Huxley speaking. Oh? Well, thank you, Doctor. I'm glad it was a crew member this time instead of one of the passengers. 
That's the third person who slipped on a banana peel. Will you please tell me how those banana peels got on the deck this morning? <laughs> Panic in the movie last night. Oh, I didn't hear about that, sir. As near as we can determine, an ankle tickler was crawling under the seats. <laughs> can I trust you, Gordon? Implicitly, sir. Well, that wasn't the worst thing that happened. When dawn broke this morning, we were not flying the company flag. We weren't, sir? No. We were flying Mrs. Hennessy's bloomers. <laughs> Yes, come out and I'll wring your little neck for you. He's got to be here someplace. I turned the key in the door myself last night when we went to bed. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. The key's still in the door and... The key's missing. And the door's unlocked. <laughs> All right, Bimbo, where's the key? Ask him where he's been and what he's been doing. <laughs> I don't want to know. All I want is for Cedric to take him off my hands like he promised. He should have been here an hour ago. And that's when I should have been at the beauty salon. I've got to get dressed. I'll take it. Hello? Hello, Susanna. It's me, Cedric. Where's my foundation? Out. I didn't. I put two bananas and two bananas together after I'd slipped on one of them. Cedric, do you feel all right? Hardly. My back is sprained, my neck is out of joint, and my right leg is fractured. My goodness, you should be in the hospital. I'm sorry, Susanna, but it looks like Bimbo's your responsibility until we land. No. You, you just... Bye. Come here, darling. Well, Mama wants to have a nice long talk with you. We even checked the banana peels for fingerprints. And? Well, there were some, sir, but they, they didn't seem human. I only hope Mr. Reardon hasn't heard about it and that he had a good night's sleep. Who's there? <laughs> uh, it's me, sir, Captain Huxley. What's the idea waking me in the middle of the night? Oh, it's the middle of the morning, sir. This is the worst crossing I've ever had. I don't know when I've put in such a miserable night. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, Mr. Ridden. Were you, were you able to sleep at all? Yes, five minutes ago, and you woke me. Oh, well, I can understand how you weren't comfortable on one of our finest luxury suites. Well, I can tell you why not. Because something or someone was in the air conditioning system. In the air conditioning system? Yes. I turned it hot, then it was turned to cold. Then it clanged like somebody was beating inside of it. And when I clanged back, I swear it hissed at me. Oh, well, I'll have some of my best men up here in a jiffy, sir, to work on it. Ah, who wants a lot of mechanics banging around all day? You get me another room. I need sleep. Another room? Well, I think we have an empty cabin, sir, room 218. But it's not one of our luxury suites. Sir. Oh, anything, anything just so I can get some peace and quiet. Very well, sir, I'll see to it personally. Oh. <laughs> oh, nincompoop. Dear, it's not like you to be so gruff with people. Well, you practically bit the man's head off. Oh, you're right, my dear. I don't know what's wrong with me lately. Well, I know, and you know, too. You've been a changed man since we lost Charles. Just can't seem to snap out of it. 
He meant so much to me. Well, I love Charles, too. But life must go on. We must learn to live with our sorrows. And bitterness is no answer. We must be kind and gentle with our fellow man. I'll try, Agnes. Well, we'd better get packed. Knuckleheads giving us room 218. How can he look so innocent and be so guilty? That's not our problem right now. We have to find a plan to keep Bimbo where nobody will see him. Unless we don't care about our jobs. Oh, we care. I've got it. I know. Put him in a box marked Danger Explosive. <laughs> no, the only empty room on the ship, 218. Well, that's a good idea, except for one thing. I'm listening. That cabin is at the other end of the ship. How are you going to take Bimbo there without being seen? Don't worry. The same brain that thought of 218 will think of a way to get him there. Behave yourself and keep that foot inside. Oh, it's hard to believe. Yesterday I was single. Today I'm a mother. Oh well. Oh, a baby. Do you mind if I have a look at the little dear? Oh, no, no, no. It, it might disturb him. He just fell asleep. Oh. oh. How old is he? Oh, I'd say about three months. Oh, I just adore them at that age. They're such cute little monkeys. Especially this one. Well, it's been nice talking to you. But can't I have just one little peek? Well, I really can't risk your see... I mean, waking him. He was up all night. Indigestion. Oh, the poor darling. What does he eat? Oh, bananas, peanuts, and coconuts. At three months? What a strange diet. Well, you see, his pediatrician comes from Africa. Oh. Well, I just don't know these modern ideas about child raising. Now, in my day, we never rushed a baby into solids. Oh, dear, no. Nice, soft foods for their soft... <laughs> well, I'm all the nerve. <laughs> Please, dear, don't you think you've had enough? Oh, come on. I know my capacity. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, madam. I didn't see your vehicle approaching the intersection. <laughs> oh, a baby. Please. Coochie, coochie, coo. Say, he's a hairy one, isn't he? <laughs> She's such a pretty girl. But I'd give a hundred bucks to see her husband. All right, Bimbo. In you go. And you'll get regular room service. Remember a baby carriage race on the schedule of activities? You know Miss Pomeroy. Always doing something original. Oh, well, that's one way of putting it. <laughs> How did he look? Well, you certainly have a way with flowers, sir. Mr. Reardon is here already. Sounds like he has a sore throat, maybe from the air conditioning. Here, get the fruit. Yes, sir. 
Welcome to room 218, sir. Now I'm beginning to figure out those banana peels. A monkey. A friend of yours or a very close relative? Isn't it yours? Now, what would a monkey be doing aboard? I'll find out when I catch him. Come on! Go! Oh. 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 Mr. Huge. Bananas, anyone? <laughs> Miss Pomeroy, I am a patient man. But pulling a stunt like this with the president of the line on board is the last straw. Captain Huxley, all I can say is... I... Don't you call me Captain Miss Pomeroy. You are fired. Through. Finished. Don't you bully her. I warn you. If Susanna goes, I go too. Miss Nugent, I'm sorry to hear you say that. Well, I thought you'd be. Because I wanted to say it myself. <laughs> you shut up. So now, goodbye, ladies. You have a choice of getting off at the next port or of swimming due south now. Quiet. I would prefer the latter, of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I want no more comments from you. <laughs> Captain Huxley. Mr. Reardon, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Now, if there's anything I can do... Never any... mind the small talk. Where's that chimpanzee? He's over there. Don't you worry about him, sir. When I get through with that... Charles, one... it is you. Oh, this is too good to be true, my pet, my baby. <laughs> you know, I've got a sickening feeling that you've saved my life again. It's always a pleasure, Captain Huxley. If he's Charles, who's Bimbo? We never expected to see him again. Last week, some scoundrel stole him out of our hotel room. A hot chimpanzee. No wonder he was such a bargain. <laughs> Charles, say thank you to the nice people. <laughs> Isn't he cute? <laughs> you little devil, you. Was that you in the air conditioning last night? Ask him to do the banana bit for you. Oh, he doesn't eat them. He just likes to throw the peelings around. Yes, the little devil. <laughs> well, come along, Charles. Mama's gonna be so happy to see you. <laughs> oh, Miss Pomeroy, I hope you'll accept the little bonus that I'm sure Captain Huxley has in mind for you. Oh, thank you, sir. We're just happy to see your little family together again. <laughs> Go on, you little devil, you. And thank you, sir. Now, Miss Pomeroy, you know how I feel about bonuses. They destroy the morale of the other members of the crew. Furthermore... You heard the man, Captain. And we mustn't forget that the man is president of the line and he's father of Charles. All right, bonus is granted. As soon as I can get around to signing the necessary papers. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. Now, Captain Huxley, there's no point in getting excited. This is no way to run a ship. What are you trying to do to me? Well, it's not me, sir. I just relayed Mr. Reardon's orders, that's all. I know, and he's the boss. All right. Turn her two degrees to starboard. <laughs> Captain Huxley, 